All right, so in this final installment, um, we're going to insert the title block um, into our template folder, template file, sorry, and set up some printer defaults. I forgot about that. We'll do that also. Um, but just as a reminder, we created a title block. So I'm just going to go to open and go to my custom library and scroll down to title blocks. And I made this title block the tree image, very simple. Um, so if you have a title block or want to create a title block, there's a series of videos on that. But just wanted to let you know, this is the title block that we're going to use. It's a 24 by 36 with some labels and text in it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, close that title block up, and open up my custom template that I've been working on. All right, so just a brief explanation. I know that um, this introduction, we haven't gotten into sort of the workings of Revit. Um, but basically, over here on the right-hand side, we have a project browser that has views. And this is your working space, so where you're making all your changes, updating your drawings, that kind of thing. And then if you scroll down, there are sheets. And this is where you print from. So if you're familiar with AutoCAD, this would be um, analogous to layout space and model space, okay, or paper space depending on what you're used to. If I double click on A100 floor plans, it has a title block already in here, right, that um, I have loaded as part of my template. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to load your title block in here. But you can select any floor plan or elevation and drag that view onto that sheet. Now there's nothing in this drawing so basically we have a empty view right and it will update like right now it's at eighth of an inch and you can see that my scale has updated to eighth of an inch and the date is updating. I need to go in and obviously fix that the to make the text box wider so it works but um, we'll not worry about that right now. Okay so just an explanation of what we're doing. We're actually going to make some sheets and insert the title block that we made in here. So I'm going to delete that view. So to create a new sheet, you just left click or hover over and right click on sheets and go to new sheet. And what it actually does is it looks at all of the loaded title blocks in here and says, which one do you want to use? And there are two title blocks in here right now, but not the one that I want. So I can select load. And I want to go to my custom library and scroll down and select the title block that I made, which is the tree image, and click open, right? And then click OK. And you'll see that it makes a new sheet and it's unnamed and it places this title block in there, okay? So if I come in. and say place a uh, level one on here. Let's go to level one. Drag that in here. Right? You're going to see that this updates to eighth of an inch. And it's funny, I forgot to put my um, sheet number label in here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select the title block and right click on it. and you can't see it, but below is an edit family. And if I open that, it opens up that title block. And what I can do is change and up. See, I haven't put a sheet number in there, so I need to put that label in there for a sheet number. So I'm going to come over to create, label, And let's see what kind of label. I have an, a 3 8 inch Century Gothic. We may need something bigger than that, but let's try that at first. So I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to come over here and just place my label right there. And what I want to put in there is sheet number. And click OK. And there's that sheet number. Now I'm going to select it and just sort of move it you know, more towards the center. And I also want to go ahead and bring this text box in. 
right? So where it's sort of centered on that box. So maybe move it, move it, I'm nudging it over a little bit. And I also want to make sure that it's, you can either have it grow from the left or from the center. So the horizontal alignment, I'll go ahead and make it center, right? So now that's centered on there. And I could leave it to where there was a white all the way around it. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and pick that, go to edit type, And let's duplicate this guy and we'll make it white. And let's click on that and we'll use the same color that we used previously and we will make the background transparent. Click OK. And now we have a white number, whitish number on a gray background. So I have two options now. I can load this into project, which will work fine. So I'm going to click load and it's going to say, what do you want to do? This already exists. And I'll say overwrite the existing version and you'll see that will show up and read. Let me go ahead and make this read the sheet number here, right? So if I were to rename this, say to A107, Right, and click OK, that will update. So it's a parametric object. All right. Now the other thing I may want to do is I may want to, if I go to WT and one to tile, here's my title block, right? I may want to save that back to my custom library. So I can go to File, Save, and it says it already exists. You want to replace it? And you say, yes, I do. So it changes it. Now it's also changed in my library, so anytime I load it, it will also be updated. Okay, let's go ahead and maximize this. So now you've loaded that title block into that file. All right, now the final thing, now you can also come in, I'm going to delete this view. So you can also, if there's a title block that's already in there, like in this view, you can select that. And now in the type pull down, right, you're going to have that title block in there and you can select it and update it. So I can update it at any time. It's very similar to the section markers, right? So you can just go in and take a look and, and see how this work. Okay. Now the final thing I wanted to do was set up my printer defaults. Um, I forgot to talk about this in the last one. So if you go to the R pull down, you can go to print and and what you basically want to do you can take a look at these and they do make a lot of sense combine multiple selected views into a single file if you're printing to Adobe PDF which is what we generally are printing to you're going to be printing the current window you can also if you have multiple views and sheets you can select multiple views and sheets, but also make sure that if you select things, when you change this radio, you have to go back to combine multiple files. I don't know why, but if you do select a views and sheets, it will let you select any views or sheets, multiples that you want to do. I'm just going to say current window for right now. And then what I'm going to do um, is go to the setups. And in the setup, What you want to do is pick the correct paper size. So we're going to create D because we have a 24 by 36, right? And generally I will have center and zoom 100%. And also when you go to zoom 100%, it goes to offset from corner, but I will generally keep it on center. And then if you want to, you can come and save as, and you could save this as 24 by 36. Right, and click OK, and now that saves all of these settings for you. Okay, if you click OK and click OK or close, you don't really want to print, you can just close. Now those settings are set up for this template. And now all you really need to do is save your template. So you could save it as a different name or save over the original one you're working on. I'm just going to go to save as template. And I'm going to go to the custom library. And I don't really want to 
put it in the library because it's a it's a unique kind of file. It's an RTE file. So what I want to do is go up to this level, the Revit 2014, and just to show you where I am, I'm in C Program Data Autodesk Revit 2014, and I've made a custom templates folder. So if I double click on that, I can say A02 custom template and give it any other you know information that I want to here. You can also go to options and it has backups and different things you can set and just click save. So now it's saving that template. Now I'm just going to close up all the files that I have open. And now if I want to start a new project, right, I can go to new. I can browse. This needs to stay on new project. I want to create a new project and I want to browse and it's going to allow me to browse for a template. So I can go to my custom folder, my custom templates folder and select that template that I just made and click open and click OK. And it will open with all of those settings. So you can see that that title block is current and now that title block is current with all of the settings that I set up. But when I go to save it, it will not save over that RTE. It will ask me and prompt me to save it as a Revit file. So you can have multiple numbers of these um, custom settings. Now, we haven't really gone over families and loadable families, but everything from walls, doors, floors, roofs, um, you can create them either system families in the template or loaded families like title blocks, windows, doors, and just populate um, your template. There's also view templates. There's a myriad of things that you can do to customize um, your template. And as you learn and work through Revit, um, hopefully you'll tweak that template um, to make your work more efficient. All right.